The reason it's called dead naming is because your son is dead. So my son Xavier is dead, killed by the woke mind virus. These are the heartbreaking words of Elon Musk, the tech billionaire celebrated for innovations in Tesla, launching humanity towards Mars with SpaceX, is now on a personal crusade, a battle against what he calls the woke mind virus. For Musk, this fight goes far beyond politics. It's about a father's loss, the erosion of free speech, and a civilization teetering on the edge. I'm not just MAGA, I'm dark, gothic MAGA. Today, we're diving deep into Musk's fight against wokeness. Woke mind virus is a world without humor. A battle driven by personal tragedy and a mission to safeguard the future of society. To understand Musk's war on wokeness, let's first explore what he means by the woke mind virus. In his interview with Bill Maher, Musk explains, I think we need to be very cautious about any, anything that is anti-meritocratic um, and anything that is uh, that, that results in the suppression of, of free speech. Wokeness has become a dominant cultural force, and Musk believes its impact is far more harmful. He said the woke mind virus is killing Western civilization. And at its core, according to Musk, wokeness isn't about justice or fairness. It's about division. At its heart, wokeness is divisive, exclusionary, and hateful. It's, it's, it basically gives mean people a reason, a, 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 it gives them a shield to be, to be mean and cruel, mm. armored in false virtue. But for the world's richest man, this ideology didn't just threaten society, it destroyed his family. Musk believes that woke ideology is targeting children when they are most vulnerable, convincing them to make life-altering decisions before they are old enough to understand the consequences. The so-called gender-affirming care, which is a terrible euphemism. That's for sure. Uh, it's, it's really ch a child sterilization is what it should be. No, it, there's mutilation too. But we want to make sure that that amalgam is... Sure, sure, fair enough. Uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's child mutilation and sterilization. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Under the guise of gender-affirming care and compassion. Right. 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 I can't... I, it's, it's evil. I literally can't it's evil. anything worse than that. Yes, it's evil. I mean, you're taking kids who are obviously often far below the age of consent. Yep. Um, Confused, miserable. Yes. The reality is that um, almost every child goes through some kind of identity crisis. Uh, yeah, it's you know, part they, of puberty. Exactly. It's just part of growing up. So it's, it's very possible for, for adults to manipulate children into who have, are having a, a natural identity crisis into believing that they are the wrong gender, yeah. that they need to be uh, the other gender, or you need, they need to be a boy or boy needs to go be a girl. And that, the, and that that will solve all their problems. And that will solve their problems. And, and, and then they give them sterilizing drugs, which are called also a misnomer, pu puberty blocker. Uh, these are sterilization drugs. Uh, so they can never have children again, and have mast double mastectomies. They, they have their forearms stripped to build non-functioning Yeah. We have an age of consent for a reason. Mm -hmm. That the reason um, you can't get, say, tattoos below age 18, or um, drink, or drive, you know, there's, there's, there are ages at which you can do things because uh, if we allow children to, to, to take permanent actions uh, when they're 10, 12, 14 years old, they, they, they will do things that they subsequently greatly regret. For Musk, the fight against wokeness is deeply personal. He told Dr. Jordan Peterson how he was misled into giving his son, Xavier, puberty blockers, leading to his transition into a transgender girl. It happened to one of my, my older boys. Um, uh, where I was, um, I was essentially tricked into uh, signing documents uh, for one of my older boys, Xavier. Uh, this was before I had really any understanding of what was going on, and we had COVID going on, and so uh, there was a lot of confusion. Um, and um, you know, I was told, oh, he, you know. Xavier might commit suicide if, if he that was a That was a lie right from the outset. No reliable clinician ever believed that. There was never any evidence for that. And also, if there's a higher suicide rate, the reason is, is because of the underlying depression and anxiety and not because of the gender dysphoria. And every right. goddamn clinician knows that too. And right. they're too cowardly to come out and say it. 
right? And so that, and then we end up in exactly, when, when I saw that lie start to propagate, it just made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. It's like, I see, so you're, you're telling parents that unless they agree to this radical transformation that their children are gonna die, and you think that's moral, and you think that's true. That's so pat, that is so pathological that it's almost incomprehensible. I can't imagine anything worse of, I can't imagine a therapist doing anything worse than that, or sitting by idly and remaining silent while his colleagues are doing it. It's pathetic. Uh, it's it's uh, incredibly evil, and I agree with you that people that have been promoting this should go to prison. Uh, I, it won't stop till that happens. Yeah. It'll just go underground. There's all, puberty blockers are being accessed online by kids all the time through non-medical channels. So, yeah, right. it's not going to stop. Okay, so I see. So that's So I was, I was tricked into doing this. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it wasn't explained to me that puberty blockers are actually just sterilization drugs. Um, so, um, anyway, uh, and so I lost my son, essentially. Uh, so, you know, they, uh, they call it dead naming for a reason. Yeah, I... All right. I'm, so the, the reason it's called dead naming is because uh, your son is dead. So my son Xavier is dead, he killed by the woke mind virus. The loss of his son ignited a fierce determination in Elon Musk, pushing him to take a stand and make radical moves to combat the woke mind virus. For him, this wasn't just a personal issue anymore. It became a mission. So I vowed to destroy the, mind, the woke mind virus after that. Elon Musk's fight against wokeness goes beyond words. He's taking real-world action. His first big move was buying Twitter, now rebranded as X, for $44 billion. This wasn't just about acquiring a social media company. Musk saw it as a way to protect free speech in a world increasingly controlled by censorship. For him, Twitter had turned into a tool for silencing dissent by spreading misinformation. He believed the platform was fueling the very ideology he opposed, one that thrived on suppressing debate. You can't question things. Uh, even the questioning is bad. So, uh, you know, if you, you know, another way to you know, almost anonymous would be would be cancel culture. And obviously, people have tried to cancel you many times. Many times. Yeah, I mean, you're, every week. Yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't all. Musk took a bold step when he moved his company SpaceX's headquarters out of California. Not long ago, he announced that SpaceX would move its headquarters from California to Texas. This decision came after California Governor Gavin Newsom signed a bill preventing schools from requiring staff to notify parents if their child changes their gender identity. I have had conversations with Gavin Newsom before where I said, if you, if you pass legislation like this, if you sign legislation like this, that in my view puts uh, children in danger, um, I will move my companies out of California. And he knew that ahead of time. Okay, and so, okay. Musk's relocation wasn't just a business decision. It was a political statement. He believes the very laws that are spreading woke ideology are damaging not just families, but the future of innovation. Musk hasn't been quiet about his views. He's taken to social media, interviews, and platforms like The Babylon Bee and Bill Maher to discuss his growing frustration with the woke mind virus. Musk's fight isn't just about his son, it's about protecting future generations. He called it... Um, the woke mind virus is communism rebranded. In addition, Musk aligns himself with figures he believes share his anti-woke stance. He's openly supported political figures like Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, positioning himself as a key voice in the fight against woke ideology. Musk's criticism extends beyond politics and into the corporate world. He's targeted the diversity, equity, and inclusion DEI movement, as well as environmental, social, and governance ESG policies accusing them of putting ideology ahead of merit. Musk believes these initiatives are another example of the woke mind virus spreading through businesses, harming innovation, and limiting competition. For Elon Musk, this isn't just about technology or business. It's about preserving the values of free speech, meritocracy, and protecting the next generation from an ideology that threatens us all. What do you think of Elon Musk's fight against the woke mind virus is this a battle that needs to be fought, or are the dangers of wokeness overblown? Let us know in the comments below. Please subscribe if you watch till the end of the video.